The iPhone 14 is trash, garbage, terrible. All right, so story numero uno. Uh, remember how during the event we got four iPhones and two of them were not pros? Yeah, well, the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus pre-orders are like much lower than iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. And some analysts think that the iPhone 14 Plus is a big old failure. At least that's what's in this new report from the quoiest Ming Chi out there, Quo Ming Chi. Quo's report says, and I quote, this new product's pre-order result is significantly lower than expected, meaning Apple's product segmentation strategy for standard models fails this year. All right, so they got rid of the mini and they gambled and lost, uh, at least according to everyone else. Okay, so here's the thing, a bit of analysis here. He's, he's right, but also not that. He's wrong, some would say. Let me explain. Yes, pre-orders are lower for the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus, but of course they are. Who gets excited for the new base model iPhone? Not the losers like you or I who pre-ordered day one. You know, like the customers who this report is actually about. No, we go for the Pro or Pro Max because those models are where Apple puts all the goodies, all the new exciting stuff worth the sweaty pre-order at 7 a.m. Further on into Quo's report, he says that the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus will be widely available in retail stores due to lackluster demand. But dude, that's where all the people, all the boomers who don't need an iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max, that's where they get their phones. That's where these models are going to sell the best. These customers are the ones who go to Best Buy because they got a sweet deal through Verizon or AT&T or whatever and they get a free TV if they buy a new iPhone this week. They just are not pre-ordering pro models like us neckbeards. Not to mention this phone, uh, the Plus specifically, won't be available until October, so, uh, like, why? Instead, those people will be introduced to the iPhone 14 Plus in person, in a store somewhere, and see that it's bigger, it costs less than the big iPhones usually do, and they'll hear from a store rep that it has the best battery life of all the iPhones, and they'll be thrilled. Boom. Sold. Oh, and also because their iPhone 8 just ran out of room for pictures and they don't know how iCloud works, probably. The iPhone 14, but more so the iPhone 14 Plus, sleepers, I'm telling you. These new phones are the new iPhone XR, and they're going to blow the doors off of retailers and carrier sales once grandma's ready for her upgrade, or when they inevitably come with a free pair of Beats or whatever. Mark my words, these things are going to be everywhere by this time next year. So, yeah, Quo is right, sort of, but he's also wrong because he's just like us, a power user who gets hype over megapixels and dynamic island. Pre-orders are down because, well, this is not the pre-order phone. Phone. This is the everyone else phone and give it time. It's gonna be huge. I mean literally it's huge It's 6.7 inches, which is the same size as my dick Hey, it is iPhone day, so happy that day, which means a lot of you are probably getting your iPhone 14s right now So how about you protect that hunk of money? with a case. Specifically, with probably the most rugged case that you're gonna find, these new cases from Caseborn have up to 21 feet of drop protection. That is many of me. They also have five layer construction, including specialized foam technology that absorbs shocks and scratches like a mother even if rugged cases aren't usually your thing, I firmly believe you should have at least one of them in your collection of cases for, you know, when you get crazy. Get yours today by clicking the link in the description below, and of course a huge thanks to Caseborn for sponsoring this episode. Hi, welcome back. Okay, so story numero lasto, last up for the day, iOS 16. This thing is being downloaded like hotcakes. Oh, uh, what? Sorry, I just... I realized how much I wish I could download hotcakes. Uh, anyway, here's the story. In a report from analytical firm Mixpanel, we have numbers that say iOS 16 is not just popular, it's the most popular iOS release 
in years. This report shows that iOS 16's adoption rate is up around 50% over last year's iOS 15, and it's climbing every day. If we look at the iOS 15 adoption rate around the same time frame last year for its release, uh, we see that just about 8.5% of iPhone users decided to upgrade. But for iOS 16, we're already hitting at almost 12% in just two days. Good Lord, my son. And when you think about just how many iPhones are out there floating around in the ether, 12% of that? Yeah, that is... That's a lot. And those numbers alone aren't the only reason why iOS 16's adoption rate is so impressive. iOS 16 has as many downloads as it does, even while Apple gives you the option to instead stay on iOS 15.7 within the software update settings. Apple lets you stay, and still, iOS 16 is out there chugging along like a kid who went through puberty before everyone else and is out there in a football game mowing down fourth graders like they owe them money. Of course, there's all also many good reasons for this. It has been years since an iOS release has come out and offered so many new exciting features like lock screen customization, iMessage changes, and other cool stuff. Oh yeah, and there's a good handful of iOS 16 features that aren't even out yet. You can expect adoption percents to climb even higher when Apple releases new emojis, the iCloud shared photo library, and more, especially once people get their hands on the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. And Grandma and her iPhone 14 Plus. So yeah, you know what? Turns out it's a great time to be an Apple stan, even if the dynamic island looks like hot poopy in direct sunlight. But hey, you're probably just holding it wrong.